Let's see if you pop up. My man. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm going to get in trouble getting on this show, man. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to say it. I'm gonna let you say what you want. So I, I'm, I'm gonna. Come nah, back. I don't. I don't care about Are trouble, you man. You can. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, <laughs> I want. Do you say, want the kids to be vaccinated right now? <laughs> How young? Five, six? No, no. But uh, three months say, old. Vaccinate them all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. And uh, I was telling people earlier. You know, it was people like you, Jedi Mind Tricks, when I was growing up. That made me think outside the history book, uh, you know, songs like Uncommon Valor. And I'm so glad to see you crushing it. I feel like even harder now, your new songs are fire. I see it's like you, you've caught a whole new, I feel like you, you have more energy now than ever just crushing it. So I'm, 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 I was so happy to see you keep going. And I appreciate you for waking me up mentally, even outside of hip hop. Yeah, well, you know what it is. Today's my father's birthday, by the way. Rest in peace, Staff Sergeant John A. Thorburn. I saw you tweet that Uncommon Valor is one of your favorite yes. verses. But, you know, that's what happened. I was a kid, so I seen it firsthand. I seen what the government does to its own people firsthand. So a lot of people go, oh, why you hate the government? As a, Well, I seen the government murder half of my family, you know, firsthand. So, so that's why, you know, when I was young, you said, oh, I didn't talk about the girls so much. But, yeah, when I was a teenager, yeah, pussy, 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 you know. And, and then you start going, you know what, that's not the only way. Because I came out, the, you know, I was a little kid in the 80s where they were all, you know, horror movies were bad. Dungeons and Dragons was bad. Curse words are bad. This is bad. You know, don't say that. Don't say this. So my whole rebellion was to say anything possible, the grossest, nastiest, horrible <laughs> shit, because that's how we're going to go against society. Fuck them all. Fuck. I'm going to be the nastiest fuck. <laughs> you know, but but as I got old, I realized, like, you know, there's other ways to fight the system, too. You know, and I still do the nasty shit, too. But, like, you know, uh, sometimes when you just say fuck pussy shit, it gets looked at like, oh, potty mouth. It's You know, it's, that's not really the only way to fight the establishment. Then it doesn't work all the way anymore. You know, now it's like, ah, he does, he's just an ignorant person, you know. But, yeah. Uh, now you could say, uh, you know, but then even when I was like 19, I did a song called Every Record Label Sucks Dick. So it was like, and I was breaking down the whole music industry, the way it worked and how, yeah. you, know, you know, and now years later, you see these artists trying to get their masters back. And I was breaking down all that stuff when I was a teenager, you know, so I, I was still, even in my ignorance, I was trying to drop knowledge. But then in my 20s, I, you know, like I said, with my family, uh, when I was, when I was uh, 10 years old, my little sister was born and then she couldn't walk or talk. And that was Agent Orange, you know. And then my brother was born. He couldn't walk or talk, and he was blind. That was Agent Orange. And, and my sister died. My brother died. My brother died at 10. My sister died at 26. And my nephew, my older sister, had a healthy boy, supposedly. And then all, she said, there's something wrong with my baby. His, his hand isn't holding my finger right. And they're like, no, oh, no, nah, nah, he's fine. He's fine. And then about three months in, they said, no, nah, his body's just going to get weaker and weaker, and he's going to die. So he lived to be six months old and my father passed. Um, so, you know, Agent Orange is that chemical that they spray, sprayed on its own. You know all about it. I, yeah, well, I, I, watch I want people videos. who don't know, because I know, I know from knowing your history as, a, as an artist and the song Uncommon Valor, where you told the story of your father through Vietnam. Can you let people know about that who don't know? Because it's a, it's a great story. And also, like you said, you saw the secondhand effects or the firsthand effects of war and what it does to our soldiers as well as the other side. Yeah, well, well, that's what the song is about. That you know, my father's seventeen years old. True story. He, he was he was he was a thug in the streets. He was stealing cars. He was getting in trouble, and so they said, "Hey, go to jail or join the military." So, so seventeen years old, they train him to be a murderer. You know, they train you here, here, kill, motherfucker. This is how you kill. This is how you kill, and then you go into the war and you kill. You know, and his his gun shot four thousand bullets a minute. You know, out the side of the ship. You know, and I say, Dad, how many people did you kill? He said, he said you know, I, I was trying to save lives, not take lives. Because in his mind, you know, the, uh, they would fly him into secret missions. And, you know, the other soldiers, the other American soldiers were captured or uh, on enemy territory. So we shouldn't have been there. But he's trying to bring the boys out that are in, in harm's way here. So everybody, you know, so, so they, they, they trained him to be a killer. And my father used to say, yeah, they trained you to be that and then they don't deprogram you they program you to be that they, they put you back in society and you're a fucking killer so then you know he was he was uh getting in trouble with the law getting locked uh you know crazy drinking fighting fucking you know uh he's a wild man and uh and then uh 
after he found his second wife, he left my mother for a younger woman, and they they had the kids, and that's those are the children that died, you know. And then, uh, but he had six kids, two died, and, and the grandchild died. So three, three, two of his children, and the grandchild, you know. And you're so, saying that's from Agent Orange, like the set, the after effects of like being yeah, well, it or it's document that- it's documented too. Yeah, yeah, uh, microcephalic, cerebral palsy. But my father, the places where he was, because when Dee Dee was born, he said, "Oh, it's a one in a million. Oh, one in a million. They didn't even say nothing about Agent Orange. And Dee Dee was born '81, so Agent Orange wasn't really in the media yet. They didn't really, you know, talk about that too much in the news or this and that. And then, you know, articles started coming out a little bit, and they said, "Oh, Dee Dee's a one in a million child. This this can't happen. A kid in this bad shape." And they even said that hey, she'll she'll die in seven days. They thought she was going to die in seven days. And she lived to be 26 years old, though, you know, but she couldn't walk or talk. And then and then all of a sudden, she's supposed to be one in a million. Ten years later, in 1991, comes Max, who he couldn't walk, talk. And we didn't know he was blind at first. But Dee Dee was always fun. We'd play with her. She'd laugh. But we'd, we'd play with Max. And he, he'd just be startled and look at you fucking funny. And you'd be like, yo, this kid hates us. But it turned out that his eyes didn't attach to his brain, so he couldn't, his eyes didn't work, he couldn't see. So we'd be trying to play with him, making noises in his face, which usually makes Dee Dee laugh, but the boy's blind. So he's like, get the fuck away from us. <laughs> you know? But he couldn't talk. And he died before Dee Dee. He died at 10 years old. And, uh, you know, uh, I woke up, my stepmother screaming, my father panicking, and, and uh, he's blue. And we're trying to, you know, revive them and save them and, and you know my father looked back at me and said hey son I, I never lost one before it was the first kid he lost you know and and uh yeah it was crazy and it was unexpected because he was 10 years younger than my older sister Dee, Dee who was handicapped so we you know last thing we expected was max to die you know so yeah yep. and uh yeah with agent orange like you were saying i wasn't alive at the time but you were saying they were kind of downplaying it how how rare it was and also like if it was happening that seems to be a trend uh, in U.S. history. That's why since I was a kid, I was always skeptical of pharmacy. I'm like, I know some things are good, but the overprescription opioids, fentanyl, I saw it all happening. I've seen dozens of times where they say one thing and then you watch TV and there's that commercial that says, hey, did you take that thing we told you to take? And I'm like, yeah, you told me to take it. Well, you could sue for this, this. That's, that's my whole life is like that. So yeah, yeah. my own opinion on you too much with, with the lockdown and all these restrictions and all this stuff going on. Uh, whatever you want to say, don't say too much. I don't want to get you in trouble. No, but, I could yeah, say, if, I could how, say it all. You, you know what's going on? Yeah. No, I'm I'm anti mand uh, mandating uh, vaccines on anybody. Nobody should be forced to put anything in their body. And I'm I, and I'm not against anybody who's vaccinated. I'm not against anybody who's anti vaccination of the COVID. I mean, anti COVID vax. It's different from being anti vax. It's not the same thing. But but you know, um, I, I you know I, I have a lot of highly educated friends who are vaccinated and believe that the anti-vax movement is wrong. I have a lot of highly educated people and fa- family who believe that they don't want the vaccine anywhere near their body. And um, I see how polarizing it is. Like the, the unvaxxed are like the enemy of the world and the murderers and the worst people that ever lived. And if you're anti-vax, you're, you're, you know, you're killing everybody. And, and uh, you know, I just, I, I think it's, it's, it's all, you know, it's like uh, people going off of emotions and, and they'll read an article, see the news nonstop in their face. Oh, look, look, you're all going to die. You're all going to die. You're all going to die every fucking day of your life. People are panicking, going crazy. People are scared to walk out their houses. And, uh, you know, it, what, what, you know, what our government, what all world government does, what every government does is, you know, they, they control the people off of fear. We know that. So when there is a, a, um, a COVID happening or, or a school shooting at a school or anything, any tragedy, if any tragedy happens, 9-11, whatever the fuck, any tragedy, they take it. They fear monger the people t- t- till all you hear about every second till, till you let them have co- total control to do whatever they want, to make their billions, trillions, whatever the fuck, whether it's blowing people up, whether it's putting uh, pharmaceuticals in your bodies. They fear monger you. That's what the government does. So, um, you know, so when people are skeptical of believing certain things, I mean, their entire history has been a fucking lie to the people. So, it, you know, the government, it, it, it is a boy, boy cried wolf, too. If the government ever does tell the truth, ever, if, 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 a big if, if they ever do, 
You go, well, you you lied about that wolf nine million fucking times. <laughs> so 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 then, but then the people that don't believe the government are the bad guys because they don't believe, you know. So so it's a crazy predicament that the world is in right now, and and you know. I'm not an expert on 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 vaccines or non vaccines or any of this stuff. And and I'm not trying to I'm not gonna give you no political on the fence answer, like to I can't say the wrong thing. I'm just saying is, you know, I don't want people to make their decisions based on RA the rugged man's thoughts, because who the fuck am I? I'm a rapper. I have my thoughts. I have family who will not get the, you know, who will not. And I have family who are va- vaxxed up, feel fine, they're great, okay, boom, boom. And but I, I I have a family member my my mother my second mother my stepmother who raised me since I'm four helped raise me and uh, she's got people in her family that won't talk to her because she she won't do the je- well I don't know if I should out her for not je- whatever you know but certain people in my family don't do the jab and certain people do and uh, my little sister's jabbed up she had a wedding party and she's she's in California with all her pretty girlfriends and. You know, uh, it's just a different every, but my niece is jabbed up, you know, but uh, yeah, I you, so yeah. you see it's kind of dividing people a lot. I want to say, like, the medicine aside in Africa, they went a different approach. Like, a lot of the leaders tried to use herbs. You had a uh, New Zealand lockdown over one COVID case, you have Australia now, they can't travel yeah. three miles from their house. Like, that type of stuff, medicine aside, what do you think of all the lockdown policies? No, it's disgusting, it's disgusting. I'm seeing the footage of them. You know, I'm reading the articles about them shooting dogs and, you know, like, like you know, one case, let's lock the whole country up. And people are like, well, you know, they're killing people if they, it's like, yeah, you know what? Um, you know what's killing people? If you're going to lo- keep the society locked in a home for five years and have no lives, the, the death rates are going to go up drastically, period, you know? So, and it has nothing to do with COVID. That has to do with life shit. And the thing is, motherfuckers need to live life. We need to live. Motherfuckers are here on the earth to... To, to breathe, to live, to function, to, to, to love, to, to hug, to be with each other, to talk, to have conversations, to interact. That's what, we're not, you know, we're not in a jail cell. We've done no crime. So um, I'm, I'm heavily, heavily against any lockdowns. I'm heavily against any government saying you cannot, you can't do this. You know, this is a new law and we make up the, well, who the fuck are you, government? You, you, know, you, didn't, you didn't create me. Fuck the government. Fuck your government. Fuck, my, fuck all them governments to tell you you can't do this. You can fuck you. Fuck yeah. you, government. So, so yes, I'm, I'm heavily into the government uh, uh, saying you, you can't, like, fuck you. You know, if, if it's different if, if uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's certain, there's certain things, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm a human being. I decide what, what's right, what's right and wrong. Not some, some, you know, machine, you know, with heavy politics attached to it and control and, and money making agendas does not decide what's right or wrong for me or you or anybody or my kids or nothing, you know, so. Buster came out recently and said something on stage and it went super viral because he was like, we got to live, you know, we're not living. And uh, it's interesting how they they use politics. You know, they use Trump, people who like him, people who hate him and set everybody for a sputter where I'm seeing people that now are taking the policy that healthy people need to be quarantined. Like you were saying, it's like being on house arrest. It's like putting a whole country on house arrest. You can't even go two or three miles. There's some people on house arrest that probably have better deals than that. And the whole country of Australia is locked down. It's definitely a lot too much. You're, you said you're in Europe a lot, in Germany. What are the differences you see, like, not even with lockdowns, but also with way of life, food, like pros and cons of, of places you've lived in Europe versus America? Well, you know what's crazy is I don't, I don't really let it affect me, you know? Like, when I'm in, when I'm in Germany, I, 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 I'm with my kids. I, I, I play with the kids. I, I you know. Uh, but then if I have shows in America, I hop on my plane. I do my shows in America. And then, you know, if I have to do, do a video, I go, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not letting it stop progression in life and living. Well, I'll be dead soon. You'll be dead soon. We'll all be fucking dead soon. So I'm not going to let me not live while I'm alive, motherfuckers. No, we should all live while we're alive. Don't, don't dead your goddamn life because uh, of uh, some government fear mongering you and scaring you. And, and, you know, there are people, yeah, if, if your, your immune system's compromised, if you're sick, uh, and, and you don't feel comfortable, then, you know, you don't have to be part of, you know, that movement. You could, you know, do what you do. You know, people could do what they want to do in this world, you know? So, 
how about food and stuff like with Europe? Do you think the food's better or worse there, like in Germany? I've heard that they have well, better quality meat and stuff, but I don't know. Well, so, supposedly, you know, you know, remember, see, I know we're supposed to be the land of the free and every we do everything great, but um, you know, we're such a money monster machine, and every country is, but. You know, there's a lot more things that you're not allowed to put in the food, a lot more things that they don't put in the food in certain European countries where America, they're like, corn syrup, whatever the fuck, let's destroy them, who cares, because it's generating money and it's making money and destroy everybody. And, and the, health, the health system, it's like everything's jacked up by like 10 times in America. And I'm not even talking, you know, free health care, whatever. The, 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 the main thing is, is like if... if you, I broke my leg in, in Germany, right? I broke my damn, damn two bones in my foot. I snapped the shit. I was doing a show a couple of years back. I was in a small town. I went and I got an x-ray. I got a doctor. I got crutches. I got a cast. And I think I left and I paid about 135 euros. You know? <laughs> if you do that in America, what's it? Like 10 grand, 8 grand, 6? I don't even know yeah. what it is, you know? You don't want to go to uh, I, I go to the dentist. I got no insurance. I go to the dentist. I had a, I cracked my tooth on a microphone once. I, I like it got caught on the, on a on a speaker and I was like amped up doing a show and I, <laughs> and, and bow and I went to grab it and this shit and, and uh, I see my tooth go flying. Uh, so no. in America I went to hey, what's that going to cost? It's going to be thousands to fix the thing. I did the same shit in Germany. They fixed the tooth. You can't even see the shit. Whiten the shit. It was like, you know, I think 220 euros, you know, like, so things. And it's the same thing. Like, people, when uh, they had certain sicknesses, I know some rich people in L.A., they'll just drive over the Mexican border, stay at this resort, go see a Mexican, you know, spot that Americans yeah. like to go to because things are affordable in other countries. It's like America just hikes spikes and, and it's the same thing with the food industry make make everything cheap disgusting and charge them more you know it's crazy yeah, yeah. I, I read a 2016 article that i've been referencing a lot i think it said america's five percent of the world doing 80 percent of the opioids so like we're jacked up on pharmacy pills and like you said yep. the food that they yep. allow here is not even like considered edible in europe they won't even do it yeah and and that's the thing too the opiate crisis i mean I'm from Long Island, you know, I, you know, I lived in New York City a lot of years, but my childhood, Long Island, I moved out of Long Island in 97. But when you go back home, it's like, it's like a fucking crack house of like, or opiate, you know, they're all fucking jacked up on these drugs because they're all doing heroin. And what happens is these doctors will give all these, oh, yeah, sure, take this, take this. And they're all making a racket off of that. And then... When, when, when they stop the doctors from doing that, then they oh, I can't afford those drugs no more. Now heroin, you know, heroin's cheap in the street. They all start doing heroin. Everybody, all these kids, die, or not even kids, grown-ups, kids, they're all dying from fucking heroin in Long Island. Family members are jacked up on heroin for years and years, and you come and see them, and you're like, you know, how do we get these family members off of, of heroin, for Christ's sake? It's like, but uh, that's that's because of the pharmaceutical industry, jacking up the communities with these fucking, you know, uh, what are all the names of them? You know them all. The uh, fentanyl is the big killer because it's very tiny amounts. So, like, I think Mac Miller, people have died on that doing coke, doing other drugs, and it's mixed in, and a little bit can can kill you. So that's the big one. Our life expectancy actually has been going backwards. It like you know you always have a better life than your parents. They always want that. It's going backwards because the suicides and opioids, because kids dying young are driving it down. And this is the craziest part, because I'm like you, where I'm like, if you want to get it, if you don't want it, don't get it. You know, I don't tell people what to do. I'm not a doctor. Uh, however, I see Johnson & Johnson just settled out a multi-billion dollar lawsuit, like literally within the last two months over the opioid crisis. You have, uh, you know, uh, Pfizer settled with this Bextra lawsuit. I forget exactly what it was, but it was like multi-billion dollars with the Justice well, Department. Well, like, well, you, you know, it's funny. I had to be forced I, to take these products. That's all I asked for. I'm like, you, you know, take them? yeah, I don't want I don't want it. You know, it's funny. I had anti-Pfizer anti lyrics before the fucking vax existed, you know, and I wrote I had it in the book and shit because it was all about that. They were murdering people all over the fucking globe. Like, and that's before. Now they go, oh, anti-vax. No, 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 I'm talking about this is real. You know, go go look at the go look at the history of it. And we were talking about Agent Orange. Um, Monsanto, you saw, got bought out by Bayer for two point three billion dollars. Like, yeah. like we're in the era of supposed cancel culture. Cancel the killers and the rapists and cancel everybody, right? But, but 
yeah, let's not cancel fucking Monsanto. Let's give them $2.3 <laughs> billion. Let's cancel the little citizen, the little citizen who has a voice on YouTube. Cancel him, mm. but not the fucking big two. Th let's give Monsanto, who murdered fucking people all over the planet, let's give them $2.3 billion. Totally. And let's continue to pay taxes to the United States government that are killing millions of people all over the fucking globe for fucking century. It's like... You know, so it is what it is. You know, they, that's, they don't want to part of the cancel culture, though. It's like they want to cancel you for something you said. And you and, and like a person that doesn't have nearly the power of these people, they have these organizations that whether it's Pride Month, you know, you got you got Goldman Sachs putting up like the rainbow flag where it's like it's such a disguise of like, yeah, you peasants fight with each other, black, white, left, right. Yeah, that's you know, what it is. Back, and we're just going to chill here and, and, and cake out and throw things at you and you'll eat them like, like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and look, look at, the, look at Afghanistan right now. Right. Look at every lie told to us for 20 years straight from every president. Bush was lying after lie and after lie, you know, and, and then Obama lie after lie after lie. And then Trump lie after lie after lie. And, and then Biden lie after lie. And, and all they did was lie about Afghanistan and continue to kill fucking tens of thousands of children and innocent civilians. But then the, the big tech and the innocent uh, Internet want to say, let's, you know, any misinformation, we have to protect people. It's like, yo, you're letting like the murderers spread misinformation but a little YouTube guy saying some wild shit on YouTube, we got to protect the nation from that guy or this person. Mm -hmm. or, you know, and and then, then they'll cancel, what, 100,000 YouTube or 20,000 Facebook pages to, to save the world. But meanwhile, who the fuck did any of these people ever kill? Nobody. They killed nobody. They had mm -hmm. opinions. They had unpopular opinions, and they took them down. They took them out, you know? And the even like... Uh, yeah. oh, go ahead. Who's the right-wing guy that uh, uh, kept bringing down... Uh, he he, uh, he he did the whole CNN thing where they were like they were like you know COVID deaths is is ratings you, you know what I'm talking about oh, did you oh, see that they, where they they got the uh, did they get the footage of someone's admitting that yeah the guy was talking about probably like, James yeah. O'Keefe right from yeah Robert that guy Veritas. that guy yeah exactly exact Veritas so yeah. he's he he put out all the, he put these videos up talking about like. And, and they're like, you know, I hate to sound terrible, but, you know, COVID numbers are rating. So when they go down, I'm kind of disappointed. The guy literally said that from CNN. That was real, real footage. And then they fucking took that. What's his name? Jamie O'Keefe. They took him off of Twitter. They, they yeah. Like, like, yo, but that's that's the problem. It's like if you they know they know society's smarter than that so i mean well they know that half of society's not and they're gonna let them <laughs> they're gonna fight with the set oh yeah censorship is good because we we can't handle the truth or we can't handle the lies we can't handle being told things we're too dumb mm -hmm. to handle it so let the government let big tech let them let us have the information let let them dictate everything and they agree to it because they start off like the, the thing is alex jones is the unlikable guy so, you know, and he said some wild things and they have enough things that Alex Jones said that wasn't true. So what they could do is now they could villainize Alex Jones and they could use him as the scapegoat and say, look, and when, when, they, when they canceled Alex Jones, I told everybody like, look, you're letting Google, YouTube, Twitter, all of them take him down. That's mm. the first step. That's that. I said, that's now they're coming for you. They're coming for you. They're coming for pro black networks. They're co coming for anti cop networks. They're coming for everybody. And people mm. are like, I, th I think you're a, you know, a, a paranoid. And then they came for everybody. You mm. know what I mean? And people, people, as long as they take down the side that they disagree with, they're, they're, they're promoting it. They're like, good, censor the people I don't like. It's like, you fucking mm. idiots. How stupid are you? <laughs> yeah, no, you're totally right. I remember b before, like, uh, this was when Lord Jamar was the first one, kind of, when they were like, what do you think of the Macklemore song? He was like, I feel like he's pushing an agenda. And that was, like, crazy for that time because no one was uh, saying that. Where now it's gone so far after Alex Jones, after this, my friend actually had his song banned from Spotify. These are two black rappers, uh, conservative-leaning, and they had lyrics, like, uh, that were LGBT, I would say, not uh, complimentary, you know? But there's songs about murder. There's songs about t killing somebody over Jordans. They literally had their song banned for Spotify, which I've That's never ridiculous. heard in my life. Well, art, see, it doesn't matter how disgusting, how inappropriate art is. Art is still art. Historically, you know, they would have been banning fucking Michelangelo's paintings from Spotify and YouTube, you know, because mm -hmm. there was a naked penis, you know. And back in the days, they would do that. They, they'd, they'd have these, this beautiful piece of art and they'd have people, let me cover it up. And they'd paint fucking pants and shirts on the fucking Michelangelo artwork. That's all real. They've been doing it from the beginning of the time, you know, and now 
big tech is a machine. And when the people, the actual people are, are defending it, like, oh, it's a public uh, utility. It's not a public utility. What, what do they call it? They say it's, it's, a, uh, it's a private company, you know. Yeah, this, that, this, they, that. they maneuver you know? both to get both benefits. They're sneaky, like where they, yeah, they bounce back and forth, I think. Of course, of course. But here's the thing. Historically, anybody on the side of censorship historically is always wrong. So right now they'll feel like they're doing the right. Oh, we're the right one. You know, it was like, you know, when they were fighting against porn in the 70s and when they were fighting against, uh, um, you know, bad words in the 50s or, you know, you can't say virgin in a movie in 1950. We must ban the movie or 1930s. That woman uh was married and and kissed a guy in a movie we must ban it ban it it's, it's like when when you censor art you're wrong period period you know that's it so you will be on the wrong yeah see pre-code movement in hollywood exactly there, there's somebody in the comment oh that's that's my boy anthony curry that's my boy yep exactly there was something called the Hayes code you you've heard of that that's that's where hollywood was getting away with doing some stuff and then, you know, Will Hayes came in. Oh, I can't say this. And then the Catholic Church, which is one of the most corrupt, you know, fucking, you know, and, and they were touching the boys and all of that stuff. And not just that. Historically, they were corrupt, you know, killing people for their property. But then they were coming in and being the moralists because there's always moralists. Historically, there will always be these moralists that know what's better for, for you, for me, for everybody. And that's just history repeating and repeating and repeating. And if they read a history book, they can say, well, I sound more like this guy than the good guy. Uh, but they don't, they don't know how to do that. You know? A lot of people think that's why our empire is collapsing. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Overextension, just printing money. I mean, they're, they're making every mistake every big empire has. But it's like in the general today, or, or in Afghanistan today, rather, the generals, they've been so woke. They've been talking about like gender equality. And now you have one of the biggest civilian, or, or rather, I think, US military. More were dead today than any time in Afghanistan for like a decade. So they really screwed up, I think, with their exit. And a lot of people are thinking, I mean, this is speculation, but I've been, I know people in the military that, like, dude, they're telling me to go on like LGBT hikes and wear a mask. And it's like, this is the military. Like, this is not a uh, camp, you know, like summer camp. On that note, real quick, not you can answer both, but I was thinking like, I know what's happening in Kabul is bad and overseas, but imagine if all these American journalists went to the south side of Chicago every weekend where 15 people are being murdered. I would love to send the whole press corps there for like two months and see if America's opinion differs on like, because I know there's some neighborhoods in America that are even more violent than a lot of these Middle Eastern countries that they nonstop cover. Yeah, well, you know, it's sensationalism, you know, oh, the worst thing that ever happened is, you know, and they'll show the worst thing that could possibly happen at that moment. And they'll put it, you know, over and over again and repeat it. No, oh, this is the whole country. This is what it is. And it was the same thing, you know, in, in Germany when, um, you know, Im you know, remember when the uh, immigrants were coming to Germany? So you had these uh, fear mongers here talking about how they're raping and killing everybody and everybody's going to get raped and killed. And, you know, so then you, you find one incident where something bad happens. So you put it in repeat for a year straight and they'll keep. Yeah, that's that's what it always is. They'll always do that. And that's both sides. That's right, left. They're, they're, OK, like, oh, let's take the vaccine thing right now. So. Uh, you know, they'll they'll find a little girl who had COVID and died and tell that story like, look, you are killing this little girl. You killed this little girl. You killed this little girl. You killed this little girl. And, and, and they'll repeat that story and over and one life. You killed this one. And then the other side will say, hey, this woman died from a vaccination and, and put that over. She died from a vaccination. And the other side that cared so much about the little girl will not mention the girl who died from the vaccine, you know, it's like they, they just fit the narratives for their agenda. They don't care about death. They care about being right. They care about uh, their agenda and, and what the, the narrative they want to push being completely right, rather than just putting all the information out there at the same time. Like, hey, you know, maybe the numbers of, of vaccine deaths aren't high, but this actually does happen. And maybe the vaccine, um, uh, um, the COVID deaths in children you know, does actually happen because you're saying, you know, like, like, let's just put all the fucking um, information on the table and let people decide. Like, look, they're talking about the VAERS uh, uh, resort and how many deaths with the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I, yeah. And I know I know I'm not ignorant. I know information is being suppressed on on everything. Like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, they, they, you know, but I'm just saying people go with their arguments. They find their agenda and they push it, push it, push it. And they ignore anything that could step on their agenda, you know? They, I seen one person that put up a thing about the jabs that was like, not one person was ever injured in history from this jab. And I was like, 
dude, like, he was literally saying that. And there's not one case. It's impossible. It's what never happened. And you're like, you know, I don't want to be going in and fight for the one side, but it's like, dude, you need a little bit of reality here, you know? So, Why do you yeah. think so many musicians and celebrities are so, like, kind of at maybe a disconnect with a lot of the working people where they're like, stay at home, do this, do that. And it seems to be like very prevalent in Hollywood and the industry. Like, do you think people naturally do this or it's like a paid thing? Nah, you know, I don't think they're paid, but, but it is, it's, you live in a bubble, you know, there's that Hollywood bubble and all your people that are generating money, all the jobs that you're getting or everybody that you need to be down with has a certain uh, uh, point of view. <clears throat> so they keep within that point of view. Because they, they want to get that film and they want to get their song in the movie. They want to get that gig on it. On the, they want to host the Academy Awards, do the music for the Quest Love, doing the music for Academy Awards. This one, that one. They all want to be in with those people because that's where the money is. So, but then also it's this: when you surround yourself with all of the same people and all of the same point of views, and everyone's a monster that doesn't think like this little bubble, you be begin to turn into that person. And they might not even be bad. They might really believe everything their little bubble's telling them, and they believe that this is what it is. And so they don't know how to deal with the average people anymore because they're not anymore. They, they deal with this, this elite group of richer people, you know, cooler people, more connected people, smarter people, which aren't smarter, obviously. But uh, um, so I think, I think, I don't think it's like they're getting, here, say this and I'll pay you that. I don't think it's that. But they know, say this, and the people that pay me will like me more. You know, I think it's more like that, you know, so. It's a blessing in disguise because I, I think in your career, probably what helped you was being like a better rapper than a lot of these people where it's like when the quality fades, even with the news, people look elsewhere. Like they look for podcasts, they look for better rappers. Like I had heard the rap and then I started hearing Jedi Mind Tricks, Ari the Rugged Man, Atmosphere, people that could really rap. And I was like, oh, they can really rap. So there's always going to be that underground or, or, or independent way to get in. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. On that note, though, I think more than ever, like uh, if you live in Brooklyn or even a lot of parts of Long Island, you don't have a yard. And some people don't even have a safe neighborhood to exercise in. So a lot of these celebrities will be like in a hot tub and they're like, yo, just stay, stay inside for two months. It's like you've never lived in, in Marcy Projects. You've never lived here where it's not like you don't have a yard and also – you can't be running around at 10. It, I mean, you could, but it's not the smartest thing to do. So they lost touch and, and they just kept telling people, stay home, stay home. It's like not everyone has money. People have jobs. People have stuff to do. And in San Francisco, they actually had around three times as many drug overdoses in 2020 than they did from COVID deaths. And they, they printed that at CBS and were like 600 something people died of overdoses. And the number was like between 100 and 300 from COVID deaths. And that hurts because, like, you know, I'm sure you have some friends back home or people that know people. Everybody has a family member or friend who's died from overdoses or drug addiction or suicide. So the fact that they ignore that and they try to, like, bully you into being quiet um, is, is, has been really wicked. So I've been trying to push back against that. Yeah, and the fact that they can't include that in the damn story to say, hey, this is actually happening as well. And this is another pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not you know. There's another problem that we have, and you know, this is uh, you know, but they won't include that in the story because they know the story that that needs to be told, and the one that's gonna generate the scare and the fear, and and get the ratings up, and make all their bosses and all their masses, you know, their masters, you know, make them happy, and that's what they want to do is make their masters happy. They can't say it, and you, you, I mean, you look at all of it. Like, look, look at uh, take something like the Weinstein case. You saw how like. Uh, or look at Epstein, all of that shit. They, they wouldn't let, they, those were the connected people. Epstein was connected. Weinstein was connected. They wasn't allowed to say a damn word. And uh, the, the story kept being suppressed and suppressed. And, and Epstein, you know that as, as a conspiracy theorist yourself. You remember 10, 20 years ago when everyone said Lolita Island, Epstein, they do that. They fly on yeah. planes. And everyone's like, you crazy conspiracist theory guys. You know, it's, like, <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a real thing. We all know about it. But, you know. But then it came out and everybody acted like, oh, yeah, they always do that, though. You know, they always do that. They, yeah. Once once it comes out, they all act like they always knew, you know, like like Edward Snow, Snowden, you know, when, when when the government spy on every single person, they're like, yeah, but we knew. No, I said that before. I, I said the government watching like a satellite. And you call me some crazy person. motherfucker. <laughs> why would they watch you? No, why? They, they, why, you know, why would they watch you? Why would they watch you people? Because yeah, okay. they're watching everybody. motherfucker. Yeah. everybody. They, and especially you, they're watching you. 
because you talk too much. Uh, I already got a phone call this year, so they're not only watching me, but they're letting me know. So. Yo, somebody just laughed. Somebody said with the crying tears emoji. Said he called anomaly a conspiracy theorist. I don't. <laughs> no, cool. I don't. I don't believe in the term conspiracy theorist. I'm not. I, I'm, I don't mean that in an offensive way. No, I mean, no, I know. When you what, say what it's I'm, different when the NPR NPR called me a conspiracy theorist, and they they got mad because I shared a CNN article about the J and J jab, and it beat them. And they were like, "This conspiracy theory. He thinks the pandemic is being used for government control." I'm like, is that even a theory? Like, that? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I think we're conspiracy. Wit I think we're conspiracy witnesses. No, but when I say conspiracy, I mean quote unquote conspiracy theory. I should have said quote unquote, but I figured you guys were smart enough. I'm talking to the the comments, not you. I thought you guys were smart enough to know that I meant conspiracy. Oh, theories. you're good. Uh, yeah. I know you're watching. That's why I'm trying to put on a show. No, I got a call after the Capitol. Uh, event I wasn't even there I wasn't even in Washington but they used that kind of as like an in and and they were like we're watching your videos and I was like hopefully you like them you know <laughs> it was not ideal but two, one two months into the Biden administration I, I was all optimistic I'm like yeah I didn't vote for him I don't like them I'm like but hopefully like it'll go quick and then like I'm like damn but you know I, I think at this point they're starting to label people who are against like forced vaccination they're starting to like, use the terrorist definition that they used overseas so I think probably they hate like oh, over shit. half the country. And that's the problem. You shouldn't have a government. Like, I'm not saying JFK was perfect and like Nixon, et cetera, but I watched old debates and I was like, these people are way smarter, way more reasonable. They agree with each oh. other like 80% of the time because they actually seem like they liked Americans. Like now our government, I feel like hates us. Like, and it's, yeah, it's but kind of e creepy. E cause... Even if, if you watch talk shows like Dick Cavett, you know, from the 80s and 70s, they had like the most right wing, you know, Southern crazy guy and the most left wing. And then they'd have Jim Brown in the middle of the bay. Like they had everybody on to discuss and talk and act like grownups. And mm. like, go look, look at the press conference. With, you know, remember when they did the whole, uh, when Putin went to meet Biden and the whole media made, it was, that's another thing. See, like the whole right wing was like, Oh, he was an embarrassment to America. Biden's a joke, and he made us look like the worst person ever, the worst place to ever live. And then the whole left wing was like, he looked so strong and and <laughs> and powerful, and Putin couldn't look him in his eye. There was literally headlines like Putin couldn't look him in his eyes. He was so scared of Biden. Biden would, if you blow on him, he'd fall on the fucking ground. Like 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 Putin gonna be like, I can't look this strong man in the eye. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean? But but um, but then if you look at that, like like. So, so then they did the press conference and Biden would only take the people who they allowed him to take and it would be U.S. press. Like, yeah. Okay, am I allowed to take this guy? And then Putin <laughs> comes in and, and lets Americans ask whoever, whoever the fuck wants. I'm, I'm, I'll talk. Ask yeah. me a question, whoever the fuck it is. I'm smart and I can talk. Like, yeah. why can't our president handle questions? Like, hey, whoever wants to ask me some shit, ask me some shit. Shouldn't the U.S. president be, hey, ask me something. No, no, but we have to have, well, you know, we have to know ahead of time what the question is and who it's going to be and what they're going to ask. And we have to prepare him because he's, you know, a bucket of oatmeal for a brain, you know. <laughs> so I think the media was always bad, but they never were as bad as they started getting in 2016, where with Trump, it was like every day he's stepping on babies when he walks out his door. Like that was the hype. And with, with Biden, it's like, he, he's not even a top 100 person in his own party. Like, he can barely speak half the time. And they're trying to act like he's, like, the wisest wizard ever. And it's oh, like, it's was, crazy. was the press this bad 10 years ago? I don't think they were this bad. Like, it's they've kind of lost it uh, with the team. The, so. the, 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 wor the, worst, the worst that they was, yeah, now it's just like they're just, you know, gone. It's like not no reality. But they were always bad because, you know, the press even and the networks, you know, they they – press the pro-war thing forever because mm -hmm. um um you know and say something like the smothers brothers it'd be like a comedy show and they were like super liberal anti-vietnam anti-war and you'd be like they'd make skits making making fun of us being in the vietnam war and then the networks would get calls from the white house and say hey what are you guys doing they're, they're, our soldiers are over there fighting and they're making fun of american soldiers and we're you know you got to get rid of these. So the Smothers Brothers was like one of the biggest shows, you know, of the era. And finally, they had to get the they canceled the motherfuckers because like they were they were too anti-war. So so, you know, it, you know, the White House and, and, and the television networks and it all it all goes hand in hand forever. But now 
I know what you're saying. It's like there's like it's like an imaginary world of make believe, like in every sense of the you know every sense. Yeah, like, you know, it's you're crazy, right with the man. war too, and it goes both ways. I think with with the right wing in the Bush era, they used patriotism against good people in this country. Like you know, you're a hero. Um, we're going to pass the Patriot Act for the terrorists. And now that same Patriot yep. Act is being used against Trump supporters. Uh, and a lot of the same ones who probably supported it when Bush was in president because they thought it was like a conservative. Yeah, but that's always what, that's always what happens. It's, it's the fear thing again. Like, okay, uh, we're going to scare you with Muslims and, and terrorists, and then we're going to get more power, and then we're going to use it against everybody. I mean, right down to taxes. And Back in the day when they taxed people, it would be like, um, you know, they didn't even tax anybody. And yeah. then like 19, 1908 or something, I don't remember, don't, don't quote me on the years, but say 1908, you know, um, they said, okay, we're going to tax some of the rich to help with the wars. When we're going into wars, we'll tax some of the rich and people, yeah, get Robin Hood, get the rich people, get the rich people. <laughs> yeah. And then of course it backfired and now the, we're taxed on everything, no matter who the fuck we are, we're all heavily taxed. And, and now it's become such an ingrained in, in society that, like, if you said taxes theft, they'll be like, what, are you crazy? Of course we should be paying taxes to everything, for everything. And, and, and I'm, if glad, I'm glad you said that, because I was going to ask you about taxes. Just I was curious what you thought, because I feel like I'm being robbed. Like you said, they're taking of course you are. of your income, or 40% of, of your income, and then they're taking your sales tax, your property tax. Like, we're just getting robbed, and no one talks and about it. And then they tax, then they tax your retirement. That's my, crazy. My, and my, then if, my, you, if my, you inherit my, money, your kids, I think they're trying <laughs> to take 50, 60 percent of that. That's like that's evil shit, like generation. Totally blood. evil. And then what do they do? They take your money and they blow up children. <laughs> it's like so. So, so why do I want to take all my money so you could go blow up children for the next fucking hundred years of your existence until you don't exist anymore? You know, so my yeah, of course, of course, taxation. Is He's like, I just paid my taxes so they could go overseas and drop bombs on like it's exactly what it is, though. You know, and then you're in New York City, oh, I pay high taxes and, and your fucking wheels are almost falling off your car because they can't fix a road. <laughs> you know, like, like why last, are the taxes a lot? What? The crazy thing is last year in 2020, uh, before Biden even got in, Trump, uh, Republicans, Democrats, Pelosi, all of them, I think they printed $9 trillion and somewhere upwards of 22% of all money. Now Biden gets in. He's printing all this money. Both sides are fighting. What are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm sitting here thinking they're both stealing my money. They're both robbing me with taxes and they're both like inflating. This is how Germany, World War II Germany, this is how Venezuela, all these countries that their uh, economy collapsed. A lot of it was because they just kept printing money. They didn't have like you can't just print this much money, but no one's paying attention. Well, America's going down. It's unquestionable. It's not it's it's got you know, we're not going to be the big guys for much longer, you know, and I hate Man, to we say got, it. We got to bring it back. All right. We need you back yeah. to drop an America album so we get bigger. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to grow up in the yeah. good life. So that's why I've been working out. Yeah, we're, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to be able to do, you know, because uh Unless all the old wrinkly fuckers die off and the youth come and take it over, but then the youth is corrupted. You know, once they get the power, you know that's the oldest story in the book. Know, they don't even know who they are. They, you know, what I'm saying a lot of these guys that they got scrawny arms and stuff. They don't look like men used to. You know, when, when your father served. So I don't know that they're <laughs> going to save us either. It, it's going to be the weakest oh, army ever. Oh yeah. Up. That's why I'm trying to hype people up. I'm like, get, let's get off the pills. Let's work out. We can't go down this way. I don't know what the clip was. They had like a Taliban trying to do the jump rope or whatever. What was the? I, I have no idea. <laughs> they were they were doing jumping jacks like that because they, they said they jumping jacks. They, they were so it. supposedly trained by by uh, by uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, you know, and it could be out of context. I just it just was a funny clip. I have no idea what it really is. But, I saw that. I mean, real real yeah. quick before you leave, uh, I wanted to ask you just about your mindset and stuff because it sounds like talking to you that you're very wise and and you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? You're not just recklessly like one way or the other. You're really dialed in and being fair. And uh, you know, a lot of people have certain songs and then they never really have another one. Where I feel like you're even bigger now. You know, you had a lot of surge. You talked about your underground career, things with Biggie, stuff like that. You had that album, I think, in the in the 2000s. And then I feel like the last five years, you've just been killing it, where it's like I, that's got to be attributed to your mindset and how you just, like, hit the ground running and put out something. <clears throat> yeah, stuff. well, the thing is, uh, if I'm not better than I was before, I'm going to retire, you know? So, like, and, you know, so I'm competitive, you know? It's like anything. If, if you're going to be an older cat in the ring with the young boys, you got to train harder. So, so I got to make sure that my shit is next level better than the shit before that and the shit before that. And plus, because we're independent, 
we don't have the big machine to like really push, push our shit. All we are is word of mouth. So I have to really give extra high level quality or it's going to go totally under the radar. I got to be something when I drop it. Or, oh shit, the new RA, the new, like I really have yeah. to put in my work and make sure that it's high quality because I don't have the machine. There's a lot of these guys that could put some mediocre shit. They got a famous celebrity name. People know who they are. So they'll drop some mediocre shit and everyone, oh, it's great. It's so great. But meanwhile, it's yeah. mediocre shit, but it's a celebrity. So, you know, when you're not a celebrity, you got to drop something 10 times, you know, better, you know, it's <laughs> so. Yeah. Did you have a part in your career? Because I know, I think it was uh, with the, the, in the 2000s, the album, No One But Chains and all those songs on it, Lessons, you know, a lot of the message was about how, like, a lot of people wrote you off and stuff. So, like, tell, tell me the process of that, like, going from, you know, where I'm sure, even in my career at one point, people, like, they'd look at me and be like, yo, you were that dude that I used to like or something, like, where they didn't care about anything new, where, you know, that process of just like that album and then keep coming out. Cause a lot of people will just kind of go into the shadows and be like, and, and not be able to hit and deliver like you've been. Well, well, I got, I got lucky because the, the, um, I saw when I was a teenager, I had all the devils, you know, knocking on my door, every label you could name nine, nine record label bid and war. And they all, you know, every famous person in the music industry, it was all, uh, you know, knocking on my door. So I had like, you know, by the time I was 17, 18, you know, I had nine, nine labels and then I signed to Jive Records. And then from there, I went to Priority and Capital. But what, what happened was, you know, I, uh, I said a lot, you know, I'm the same person, just even younger and crazier and wild version of that. So I said a lot of fucked up shit and I always said what was on my mind. So if a record executive was in the building and he was an asshole, I'd say, yeah, hey, yo, how about I smack you in your feet? You know, I was an ignorant kid, you know, so like. And then, you know, I'd come up there and I'd be a little aggressive and crazy. And, and so it got to the point where I made a lot of enemies and, and, and blackballing is real where like, you know, it was a small industry. It was before the Internet. So if there's, you know, 10, 11 companies total and eight of them have dinner together or, you know, they're all, you know, they're all in bed together. So, uh, you know, you get blackballed and that was real. And then I started like this 800 man riot at this one venue and people would going crazy and breaking shit and $50,000 worth of damage and guns With like outside. a mosh pit? Like you started it with your No, music? no, I started a riot. Like, like I had a, we had problems with these people in the front row and I brought like, it was before Giuliani, so there was prostitutes all over the street. So I said, <laughs> hey, Cug, I'll give you some money. Come on stage and, and we'll duct tape you and handcuff you. And I was being crazy and uh, started a big riot. And, and um, after that, I was like, blackballed from like doing shows in the states like every show i had got canceled and i couldn't book shows for like five years in the states and the the, the record labels were like oh i was banned from my own label i wasn't allowed in the building or they called the police on me it was like all this crazy stuff so then i'd have to go overseas in, in the 90s to like do shows and then finally i i lasted so long that uh that like all the people there were like old and wrinkly, like all the bosses. And then like the youth came up and was like, RA's a legend, we love RA, you know? So like all the young kids that were like 12, 13, 14, when I was breaking shit, they were like 20, 25 and they had money and positions and they hey, I fuck with RA. So all of a sudden, you know, the black ball died because the old wrinkly people didn't have jobs anymore and the young <laughs> kids came in and rescued me, you know? So, yeah. And, and you talk about Vinny Paz, it's another one because I was from the, the mainstream um, record deal world where you'd go up to the record labels and, and, and meet the high up people and you'd have to sign these deals where Vinny was p later on in the game. So he was doing independent stuff and atmosphere. These guys were doing uh, indie records and I didn't know that world. I thought, eh, as, you know, cause I knew, you know, I grew up with Biggie and Mob Deep and Wu Tang and all these guys did major things, you know? So like, I'm thinking like, Oh, you know, EPMD, Biz Markie, all of these, all these legends. So um, I'm thinking, ah, this underground, what, what's this Jedi mind trick atmosphere stuff? I didn't really get it yet. I didn't understand the movement yet. And then once I paid attention to it and Vinny was like, yo, you know, we've been fans for years and you're a legend and boom, boom. And, and he, he brought me under his wing and he brought me on some shows and it was like this whole brand new bunch of of rap fans that i've never seen before this new independent world of like you know rough rowdy white kids crazy packed houses of like a whole nother 
section, and, and not just white boys. You know, there was there, there was you know hood kids. It was it was all uh, you know uh, uh, Latinos, blacks, uh, uh, everybody. But what if I'm there saying, were you more know, white people, it's okay. I won't cancel you if there were more. White <laughs> no, no, I'm not scared of being canceled. I just I'm not trying to say Vinny Paz only got a white boy fan base. Uh, he does have you know hip hop fans. He got he got the whole whole spectrum. But yeah. you know, it's just a, it was a new. It, at, you know, an atmosphere had college girls. He had a whole crew of, like college girls wanted to go, like beautiful, hot ass women, or like damn, like this is the independent game. You know, and and what happened was I do a show with legendary, you know, Wu Tang and Juice Crew members, and it'd be packed. But then a week later, I do a show with like like just some indie rapper, like ASAP Rock, right? And it'd be like double the amount of people at the Aesop Rock show than the Cool G Rap Raekwon show. It's like, wow, like the, the independent game just, like I, I didn't know about it. And I, I learned by, by being in, you know, meeting those people and, you know, doing shows with them. And, and you know, it's just uh, hip hop ain't just one, you know, card, you know, like cookie cutter. You know, there's a whole bunch of different uh, shapes to it, you know. So. Yeah. Well, atmosphere, I was talking to my one buddy who does big venues and stuff, and he, I mean, it was like festivals, and I asked him, I was like, who's who's, who's got the best show? Or he was like, oh, I don't know, but he's like, I, I will have to say one of the biggest crowds is atmosphere. And this is with like headliners and big people where he was saying atmosphere is blowing all these mainstream people out of the water with how big That's, it's faceless. Yo, I, I bring up this story often. Every time I do a face uh, IG with, with Sluggo or whatever, I bring it up. But like, I, I had the, the misfortune of doing a show the same night as Slug in, in Canada one night, right? And it was at a college. I had like, I was doing some little bar, you know, I think it was 250 people, whatever, you know? And uh, he was doing the college and it was fucking swarmed. And he had so he had outsold, um, there was more people for him than Lauren Hill, Ice Cube, I think Cypress. It was like all the biggest rappers you could name. Atmosphere had more college kids there than all of them for his show. So yeah, that, that's the truth. Your man told you the truth. Yeah, and that's, that's when funny. I started learning. That's yeah, when ahead. I started learning about more about that world. Like it ain't about the famous name because Atmosphere will sell more tickets than than somebody got millions of records and is all over the Tonight Show and everywhere on TV and magazines. Sluggo and and Tech Nine as well. Uh, strange music. Tech was selling so like. I would do these famous people shows, shows with famous rappers, and then you'd go see Tech Nine, and Tech would have the house packed out. I, and San Clown Posse, too. Yeah, no, they're, <laughs> huge, they're huge. I heard their festivals get wild, and I love that their fans will just boo somebody. Like, they got, I, I heard, like, you really got a rocket to get with their fans because that they will boo you if they don't like you. I think your, uh, your connection kind of cut out a little. <sighs> Damn, we lost them. Hold on, let's see. All right, I think you're. I think your connection went out. Did it freeze up for you guys, Steve? Damn. Yeah, I think they, I think they, uh, he's, all right, well, I'll wait a few minutes, see if we'll come back in so we can do a proper, like, peace out. But uh, that was, that was fun. Uh, disconnected, yeah, I'll wait. If you hop back in, all right, I got you. Sometimes the, there you go, should be good. Yeah, he should be back in. Yo, I don't know what happened. I was like, I was like, yeah. You know, we talked all this stuff that the feds and the NSA wouldn't like, and then we talk insane clown posse. They're like, bap, cut it off. Well, they, they got in trouble as like a terrorist group the one year. I think they had to sue no. and stuff. That's crazy. No, no, but they still are. Oh, I think they still, still are. I ah. think they still are. It's crazy. The FBI made juggalos which are like the funnest silliest people of all time like if you meet they're like awesome they're just like they paint their faces clowns and act like fucking lunatics and drink and have fun and party and this is a terrorist organization to the fb i mean this is the threat of america to fucking juggalos it's like so ridiculous that's Stupid. crazy it was yeah. funny you talked about with atmosphere him having a lot of chicks because i feel like the hottest and craziest chicks i've ever met you know were always huge atmosphere fans yeah and over that because i mean he taps into a certain energy where like there's 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 definitely people from college i remember that she they're oh you and that atmosphere was almost like the end they were so happy i liked atmosphere and i'm like 
I was like, I got all his albums. Like, let's go smoke and hang out at my crib. Like that, that worked yeah. too many times. So I got to thank Alex yeah. if I ever see him for that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The first time I ever heard about, uh, uh, at, well, well, the first time I knew that it was chicks was I worked for this magazine called Mass Appeal. I was doing like, you know, interviewing like all my favorite directors, like William Friedkin and David Cronenberg and John Carpenter and Wes Craven. It was like really cool because I, 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 whoever I named, they would just let me interview them, you know. But then there was this porn star. Think, Will you interview this porn star? And it was a young girl porn star, like, because it was the beginning of, like, web porn girls, you know, it was, like, back in 03 or 05 or something, I don't know. So she, they were like, hey, um, I said, you don't know who I am? Do you listen to underground rap? And she said, yes, I like underground rap. Do you like Slug from Atmosphere? I was like, I'm already a rugged man. She's like, I don't know who that is. Do you know Slug? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, this, this hot little thing wants Sluggo. <laughs> Did you do a song? Yeah. Have you done a song with Slug or no? Yeah, well, it's on a new album called Golden Oldies. We have a video for it too, Golden Oldies. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, then, then that line, you're like, I, I'm on a song with Slug. She's like, oh yeah, and you're like, you're like, yeah, but you, I wish you knew who I was too. But that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. It was, I, I didn't care. It was it's funny. Uh, anything else? I mean, uh, anything you want to lean on? Uh, a message for the world, advice, whatever? Yeah, just stop. Um, honestly, like most of us, most of us are trying our hardest in this world, this crazy fucked up world. So if somebody thinks differently than you, even if they're mistaken, even if they're ignorant, there's no reason to hate somebody. Sometimes people just, you know, they're on the wrong side of the argument, the wrong side of the spectrum. They're either not educated properly or they got the information that they want that's not accurate and it doesn't make them your enemy and the best way to to get them you know to see the light isn't by saying you're dumb you're stupid i hate you that's not the way the way is the kind of hey i don't agree with that but what do you think about this and i know that's not always easy because ignorance to be like, you're dumb you're dumb but don't be them don't you know, you know if your first answer to an argument is you're stupid you're dumb that's not going to change nothing. You know, that's not how we change minds, you know. So. 2016 to 2020 really did something like politically that drove people to like a new level of insane. And then on yeah. top of it, the lockdowns, I feel like were so psychologically abusive. And they brought in this whole new wave of it wasn't even like Trump or anti-Trump. It was like vaccine or anti-vaccine lockdown or anti. They brought in this and yeah. it's driving people crazy. I've seen in the comments a lot of cool people, but I do feel bad because I, I wish people would do what you said think about stuff and and that's the only way forward because they're they're playing many games with people right now yeah and everybody is a fucking expert everybody knows better than everybody everybody knows the truth eh, you don't know the truth i'm the only one that knows the truth you don't know you don't know you you know and plus also we're in a time where information is coming at us so fast because um you know it's a crisis and a pandemic uh, or, or well you know, it, it, the lockdowns and all of this stuff is coming at us. So I don't, I don't want to, you know, everything's crazy right now. So <laughs> yeah. appreciate you so much for joining. Yeah. That was fun. I hope you guys had fun and yeah, you're a good guy, man. I, I watched some of your clips and shout out to our boy, Eamon. He's the one who's like, yo, he, he was like an anomaly. He wants to, uh, you know, interview you. I said, yeah, yeah, of course. So, so Eamon, uh, the singer, one of the best singers I know in the world. Shout out to Eamon. And his little daughter, Chi-Chi, she just had an accident. She fell down, scared the shit out of him the other day. She's fine now, but he, he got a scare. Yeah, she, but uh, I much love. It. Hopefully he uh, jumped in, too. I told him to hop in for a little bit. We'll see if he's here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Ari. Right. Appreciate you. Peace, man. brother. Peace. All right. And for those who want to watch.